Disclaimer. It is highly suggested to refrain from rappelling up the St. Louis Arch to get to the top. You're better off just using the elevator. <laughs> I shouldn't have to tell you that, guys. Downtown St. Louis is one of America's most forgotten places probably because of the crime that goes on on the north side of the city and how the St. Louis metro area has been the meth capital of the U.S. and that seems to be the only attention that the city gets nowadays. There are some really awesome things about downtown St. Louis though and it's definitely a place that you should visit when you get the chance. And hopefully this video will show you why. First things first, we've got to get the hell out of East St. Louis. If you haven't seen my East St. Louis video, make sure you do so by following the link at the end screen. If you enjoy my videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and check out my channel for more. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed them up in order to show more in a less amount of time. You can also follow how long it takes me to drive in the bottom left corner of the screen. The Eads Bridge opened to traffic in 1874 and is the oldest bridge in the area over the Mississippi River. Other old bridges were built north of downtown St. Louis, north of the Missouri River, where the river was more narrow, but the Eads Bridge is the only one from that era that's still standing. You're saying, wait, what? You're saying that that's a this is a 145-year-old bridge? Yes, it is. Don't worry. Stop freaking out. The bridge isn't going to give way to me or you when driving over. The bridge has been well maintained over the years. The region's mass transit system called the Metrolink also runs on a lower deck of the bridge. And if you're a fan of mass transit, St. Louis is a great place for that matter, as not many cities of its size have easily accessible mass transit like St. Louis does. To the right is America's Center, it is St. Louis's downtown convention center, more on that later. We are now in the Washington Avenue Historic District, home to early 1900s architecture. The city has done a nice job redeveloping this district as well, and that process started in the late 1990s. Today in 2020, this looks like a popular place to go out and get hammered. Several government buildings line the south side of Market Street to the right, while parks and plazas line the north side of Market Street to the left.
St. Louis isn't necessarily known for the height of its skyscrapers, however the St. Louis Arch obviously makes the city skyline one of the more recognizable in the country. The St. Louis Arch is 630 feet tall, making it the tallest memorial in the United States. The tallest building is one metropolitan square, which is only 598 feet tall, which is not very tall for a skyscraper. A nice compliment to the apparel of the arch is the old courthouse which is now a part of the Gateway Arch National Park and serves as a museum with historical exhibits and events. The old courthouse was the tallest building in the city from 1864 to 1894, just under 200 feet tall. Construction of the St. Louis Arch was completed in 1965. If you haven't had the chance to go up the arch yet, you're missing out. The St. Louis Arch alone is a huge reason to come to St. Louis, and if you like a free zoo, museums, and walking along Washington DC style plazas, there's plenty more for you to do as well. Doesn't hurt to go to a Cardinals game at Bush Stadium either. St. Louis was founded in 1764. The city was one of the top 10 most populous cities in the United States from 1850 all the way to 1960. The population peaked at 856,000 in 1950, and today St. Louis has a population of 302,000. I'm sure St. Louis slappies don't like hearing that any more than I don't like hearing that about my home city Detroit, but St. Louis and Detroit are not alone. Just about every original large city in the United States that's not on the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean has seen a population decrease, with the exceptions being maybe Dallas, Houston, and Atlanta.
This is America's Center, which serves as the convention center for downtown St. Louis. This is also right next to where the NFL St. Louis Rams used to play, and it used to be called the Edward Jones Dome, but now they play in Los Angeles. St. Louis traditionally is a big sports town, and I'm sure the residents of the area are upset about that still to this day, even though the St. Louis Rams haven't been good since the greatest show on turf with Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, and Isaac Bruce. They won a Super Bowl in the year 2000, and after the 2001 season, they were complete trash. But hey, you still have the St. Louis Cardinals and the St. Louis Blues. The Cardinals won a World Series in 2011 and the Blues won their first Stanley Cup in 2019. When the people of St. Louis aren't out getting drunk off of Anheuser-Busch or their other 18 breweries, they're watching a game at Busch Stadium. Want to guess who that sponsor is? Well anyway, straight ahead is the home of the St. Louis Cardinals. Earlier I mentioned that St. Louis doesn't have extremely tall buildings. It definitely doesn't. Downtown St. Louis really does look like a cool urban center though, unlike some of the recent boom towns. You have a dense look of buildings throughout downtown St. Louis which might look to be an expansive area for a city of only 302,000 residents. The reason for why downtown St. Louis covers more land area than a city with a population of more than twice its size, such as Indianapolis, is because St. Louis has a bigger metro area, and it had 856,000 residents in 1950. It used to be the nation's fourth largest city, and it was one of the nation's top 10 largest cities for over 100 years. St. Louis was a large city way before cities like Austin, Texas, Indianapolis, or Columbus, Ohio ever came close to being. St. Louis still has a larger metro area than all of those cities as well, and when it comes to TV and radio market size, they rank cities based off of the metro area, not the city limits. Therefore, you're going to get more of an urban vibe in these older cities like St. Louis than the newer cities that started growing when suburban expansion was more popular than building up. Don't discount the metro size when you think of some of these cities. That can tell you more about an area than just the stats of an inner city. On the left is the Enterprise Center. I might or might not be renting a car from said company when filming this video. I'll let you decide what to think on that one. More importantly, the St. Louis Blues play here. The city often hosts NCAA tournament games, and most of those games are played here. The Missouri Valley Conference plays their conference tournament games here as well, known as Arch Madness. The winner of that gets a bid to play in the actual March Madness tournament. Oh yeah, and concerts are also held here too, as you can imagine. The center hosts around 170 events events per year.
The newest attraction to downtown St. Louis is the St. Louis Aquarium, which opened just before 2020, which was about four months prior to filming this video. If you have visited this aquarium, make sure to leave a comment below and let us know what it's like. Along with the aquarium being new, there's also two new high-rises being built that are over 300 feet tall as I speak. And we finish off the video with one last look at Bush Stadium. St. Louis is truly one of my favorite large city downtowns, and yes, the arch is one of the reasons why. If you enjoy my videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and check out my channel for more. We'll see you next time. Peace!